Have you ever wondered how to transform your outdoor space at night? Imagine illuminating your favorite trees, casting a soft glow onto your patio, or highlighting a beautiful walkway. Landscape lighting can completely change the look and feel of your yard, adding both beauty and security. In this video, we'll guide you through the design and installation process, helping you create a stunning and functional outdoor lighting system. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren, and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. We're going to cover two basic styles of lighting in this video. We're going to talk about up lighting and we're going to talk about down lighting. Now for down lighting it's typically used for pathways and walkways to light up pedestrian areas that would otherwise be dark. Up lighting is to accent things and there's two types of up lights. There's what we call a spotlight and what we call a wash light. A spotlight is used for larger objects, so like the corner of a house or a tall tree, and wash lights are used for smaller plants like this Japanese maple behind me or for a medium to small size shrub. Quality landscape lighting is all about balance like you see here. You want evenly distributed lights across the front of the house or whatever else you're trying to light up. But you don't want so many lights that it looks like you're trying to call in the UFO from close encounters of the third kind. The key to outdoor lighting is to accent certain objects in the yard, not to overwhelm people with the abundance of light that's being produced. Start by assessing your yard and look at those key features that you want to accent. For example, like these Yoshino cherries here behind me. Then from there, look for areas that need functional lighting, such as pathways or walkways or driveways in and around the property. A pro tip for up lighting really big trees, medium to tall trees, use two or three lights on that one tree. The reason being is if you use one light, one side's gonna be really lit up and the other side's gonna be full of shadows. It's not gonna look right. To get a nice full look, use two or at least three lights on those trees, just like the maple tree you see here behind me. So we've used two lights to up light this tree here and at night it is just stunning. Never use just one light on really, really big objects. Think of your landscape lighting in terms of zones. So zones will go to something called a transformer. A transformer is what converts 120 volts out of an outlet down to 15 volts that will run through the wire to the lights in your garden. For example, here in this yard, there are two zones. So we have a transformer for the front yard and we have a transformer for here where we're at in the backyard. And there's two types of transformers. There's a digital transformer and also an analog transformer. My front yard is on analog, which looks like a rotary clock, an old school clock. And my backyard is on digital, which is a push button transformer. The next thing we need to do is install the transformer. So you need to put your transformer somewhere close to where you have an outlet outside. Make sure that outlet works before you put in your transformer and run all your wires for your light. I would hate for you to do all this work and find out that the outlet's not working. So ahead of time, test that outlet, make sure that the, the 110 or the 120 coming into the outlet's good. And then that way we can install our transformer. We can have 12 or 15 volts coming out and so what the 12 or 15 volts does for us, this makes it homeowner friendly. If we were running 110, 120 volts throughout the yard, we would need to be a licensed electrician. So with the 12 to 15 volt range, this is a homeowner friendly project. Okay, so installing one of these transformers is really easy. We're gonna look at this analog transformer. The digital transformer outside works the exact same way. So there's a, a, a couple of screw holes in the back of this. So all of these boxes come with a screw template. It'll be a piece of paper with a couple of bullseyes in them. You can line that up along a stud. So I have this in the same stud this outlet is hooked up to. So just below it here, there's a screw here and there's a screw underneath it. So this is the back of the digital transformer. So you've got two screw holes there. Here again, it'll come with a template and then just above here, you can see where the screws went into the brick. So no need to find a stud here. You can go right into the mortar as long as you have like a Tapcon screw or some of the plastic inserts that the screws can go in so they don't slide out. And all you do is just slide it on. This transformer here comes with what's known as a photo cell. So a photo cell detects light. And the cool thing about a photo cell is I can set this to come on at sunset and tell the clock to turn it off at one hour, two hour, four, eight, 12, however long I want the, the, the lights to run, it'll run and then it'll automatically shut off. If you're going to use a photo cell, make sure it has good access to the sunlight. You don't want to put this in a garage or some really shady location where the, the photo cell is not picking up on sunlight because it's not going to work. So put this in the sun and you can set your clock to come on as soon as the sun goes down because the photo cell will pick up the light. Before we move into how to install the wires and the lights, there's a couple things that we need to discuss before 
moving forward. And those are going to be wattages and voltages and wire diameter. So a watt is just a measurement of how much power something can put out. And your transformer is going to have a rating on it. There's going to be a sticker on your transformer or there's going to be information on the box that the transformer comes in. The transformers that I have are 150 watts. Now a general rule of thumb when working with these transformers is you only want to use 80% of the recommended wattage that that transformer can put out. So for a 150 watt transformer, I want to make sure that the wattage that my lights are going to call for are no more than 120 watts. Also another important component is the diameter of the wire that you're using for your light. So wire thickness is measured by something called gauge. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire is going to be. So you'll go to your lighting supplier and you'll see these wires 14-2, 12-2, 10-2, 16-2. The two means that there's two wires right next to each other. So you're going to have a hot wire and a common wire. And then the, the higher number, that, that 10, 12, 14, 16, refers to the gauge. And if we look at this chart here, you can see wire gauge 18-2, 16-2, 14-2, all the way down to 8-2. And you see as the, the wire gauge number goes down, the thickness of the wire increases. And then the maximum amount of wattage that we can put out on that wire also increases. So I want you to think of these wires as almost like water pipes. The, the bigger the pipe, so the bigger the wire, the more water or the more wattage, the more electricity we can push through that wire. So why is this important? So if you get to the end of your run of lights, so you've got your transformer, you've got your wires running out to your lights, and let's say that uh, the last light is 150 feet away from your transformer, and you're already pushing 140 watts of light on a 150 watt transformer, you're gonna see something called voltage drop. And so what that's going to do is cause those last two, three lights on the end to look dimmer than the ones that are closer to the transformer. So by applying that 80% rule, you're going to reduce the amount of voltage drop that you would potentially see. Also by using a thicker gauge wire, you're also going to reduce the amount of voltage drop that you could potentially see. My general rule of thumb is I use a 12-2 wire off of a 150 watt transformer and I don't go any further out than 100 feet off of the transformer and I've never had an issue with voltage drop. If you want to be more specific with your measurements on wattage and voltage drop and wire thickness, if you'll Google outdoor lighting calculator, there are several online calculators that will help you calculate the correct wire thickness and the amount of wattage you need for the lights that you have designed. So now we need to look at how we lay out our wire. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that your transformer is unplugged. And then from there, we can take our 12-2 outdoor lighting wire and install it into the transformer. The first thing we'll do is split that wire. And then from there, what we'll do is strip off about a half an inch of insulation off of each one of the wires. Then from there, we can attach it to the transformer. So in the transformer, you're gonna see two screws You'll see one that says 12 volt or 15 volt and one that says common. At this point in the game, we don't need to worry about which side's hot, which side's common. Take one wire, put it in the 12 to 15 volt port. Take the other wire, put it in the common port and screw them down snugly. As we lay our wire down, we want to be mindful not to have the wire going across the turf. What I like to do is be really discreet with the wire. I'll run it in flower beds as much as I can. And then once I get to turf, what I'll do about, about 18 inches from where the, the turf and the flower bed meet, I'll get a flat spade shovel and I'll dig a little trench about three inches deep going all the way from one side of the turf across to the next bed. That way, the wire's not on the turf. I'm not hitting it with mowers. I don't have to worry about kids tripping over it. It's just unsightful. So when you can, hide your wires, whether that be direct burial into the ground. If you're already in a flower bed, rake back your mulch, put your wire down, and then cover it back up. So now we're ready to start installing some lights. So the first thing we need to do is put in the light holders. So these come in the box. And for smaller trees, we want the, the lights closer to the tree. For bigger trees, you want them further away. For a tree this size, uh, this tree's six to seven feet tall. I'm gonna go out about two feet, and I'm gonna use a rubber mallet, and I'm simply going to tap that into the ground. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, two feet away. Now it's time to install our lights. I'm gonna show you two different methods. 
The second method I'm going to show you is the way that I prefer to install the lights. So the first method is most lights come with these little screw on attachments. So you just unscrew this knob here. And what it has are some teeth and those teeth dig into the wire as you screw the other end back on. So you line these teeth up with the wire and as you're screwing in the wire, those teeth slowly go down. So the, the key here is the way the teeth are designed. Your, your teeth, there, there's uh, four teeth here total. You want two of those teeth to go on one side of the wire, two of those teeth go onto the other side of the wire. And once we've done that, you can then attach the light to the, the light holder that we hit in the ground with the rubber mallet. So now I wanna show you the method I prefer to installing lights. I already got my light in the ground here. Here's the wire that goes to the light. This thing right here, I've had a lot of issues with these in the past. So what I like to do, I cut that garbage off. We're going to splice this wire. So we're going to cut it there, split it about that far. That's about six inches or so. Then we are going to expose about a half inch of the copper in the insulation. So we've stripped off the insulation. We're left with something like that. This is our lead line. This goes, so the transformer is over here to my right and we're in a series of lights going down the, the line here. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna cut it. And we're going to splice again. Got this side, this side's the hot side that goes to the transformer. This side keeps going to more lights. And we are gonna reconnect all these. So we need to strip the side that comes from the transformer. We're gonna strip the side that goes to more lights further down the line. Here again, about a half inch of exposure is more than enough. And what we're going to do is this. This part's kind of important. On your wire coming from your transformer, you need to ID which side is what. And, and I've worked with lots of different wires in the past. Sometimes there'll be a white line going down one side and not a white line going down the other. Other times there's, there's a ridge going down one side and not the other. On this one, there's writing on one side, but not writing on the other. So the sides that have writing, so this there's a little bit of writing on here. It tells me the gauge of the wire and how much electricity it can handle. I, I'm gonna match it up with the wire that comes from the transformer with writing on it as well. And so it's this side. So these two go together. I'm gonna to give those like a half twist together. And what I like to use are these wax nuts. So here again, what we're going to do, we've gotta match up the wire coming from the transformer to the, the wire that's going to more lights. We're gonna twist these together. Now the, the wire that goes to this in particular light, so the, the wire that branches off to go to this light, it doesn't matter which side goes to which on those. And so you're gonna take that and you are going to wrap that in there with it and it's tied in. So now we have to set our timers. I'm gonna do the analog one first and then show you how to do digital. So that way, no matter which one you have, you know how to do it. So right here is the time of day. So it's, uh, it's roughly, my watch says it's 4.43. You're not gonna get the analogs exact. So that one's in between the four and the five right there. So that's the right time. And we use these pins. These pins come in and out, just like that. And so the green one, it represents coming on and the red one represents coming off. So what happens here? This turns around real slow and you'll hear it click right there. That turns it on. So it comes on roughly 8.30 at night. That's about when it gets dark as we're getting close to summertime here. And then it rolls back around to 12 at night, it goes off, okay? And so I'm gonna just reset this. So you just rotate this around. You put the pins, uh, the, the green one, what time you want it to come on, the red one, what time you want it to go off. And then right here, you just set your time. And so we're close to five o'clock right now. That's about right, just like that. So it'll come on around 8.30 go off around 12. So the first thing you'll want to do is hit menu. And every time you hit menu, it's going to go to one of these dots. All right, so right now it's on manual on off. I hit menu again, it's on clock. If I wanted to set the clock, I would hit enter. I would tell it, do I want AM or PM? Right now it's PM. 
So clock PM right there. It's already 4.48. If I wanted to change the hours, I, I would hit uh, enter again. Hit up to make that go up. Hit down to make it go down. I'd hit enter again. Change the minutes to whatever you want. Hit enter. My time set. Menu. You can test it. The, what I have it set on right now, I have the photo eye timer on off, okay? So I have this set, so the, the photo cell is gonna turn it on automatically at when the sun goes down. And you can see here, I've got it set to go off at midnight. So I'm just gonna hit enter here, enter again and it's set. So it's gonna come on when the sun goes down and go off at midnight. And so this is the finished product from earlier. So remember we did two lights on this blood good Japanese maple, two feet on either side. And you can see the results here. Let's go take a look at the other Japanese maple that we installed lights on. And this is the other Japanese maple that we applied it. I think this project turned out really well. Let me know about your outdoor lighting experience in your yard down in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Guys, as always, thank you for watching A Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.